Hello and welcome to News Click. India and China are facing each other off again in what is an unprecedented crisis of late, perhaps since the Sumdorong Chu incident uh, close to two decades uh, ago, and later the standoff on the Dalat Beg Oldie. This incident seems to have escalated already to a point where relations between the two countries are being seriously affected. To talk about this, NewsClick has with us today retired Navy Commander Atul Bharadwaj. Welcome, Atul. Thank you, Raghu. Uh, tell our viewers what the standoff is about and how it has reached this stage. You know, there is a disputed territory between Bhutan and China. Both Bhutan and China are in talks to resolve the issue. Now, the present problem is in an area called Dokalam, which is a disputed territory, as I said, between the two countries. Now, India gets involved in it because uh, Bhutan is an ally of India and India has some uh, treaties with it which say that it will basically come in for its help in case it is needed. Now in this particular case uh, it is said that China was building a road and coming right up to Dokala. Now, this particular plateau which China wanted to reach up to uh, basically overlooks our Siliguri corridor which connects the mainland to the northeast. So the Indians feel that if China comes and occupies this disputed territory and reaches up to this place, then they will have a strategic advantage that they would be able to you know, uh, use their artillery guns and in case of an hostility, you know, disrupt the entire corridor. So India's interest is that. Bhutan's interest is primarily in, uh, you know, um, uh, in negotiating with China and reaching a stage where they are able to have a proper demarcation of their boundaries. Uh, in this particular case, since China had started building a road, uh, the sudden news that we heard was that Indian military has moved into the uh, Dokalam and occupied uh, the particular place to prevent any Chinese, uh, further Chinese developments in this, those areas. So that is primarily the dispute. The Chinese are saying that India has come and come into their sovereign territory. Right. Over which there is obviously a disagreement. Over which there is a disagreement. Uh, because nobody can occupy that territory right. at the moment. Neither China can occupy nor Bhutan can occupy nor India. Of course, India is a third party in the whole game. If I uh, recall, the first uh, physical clash uh, took place between soldiers of the Royal Bhutan Army and uh, the Chinese soldiers. They were physical pushing of each other. Uh, and as you know, none of the three parties in that valley carry arms with them. So they are just sitting there in their tents, no gun barrels pointing at uh, each other. So they just physically are shoving. But the first clash took place between the Bhutan army and the Chinese army. Yeah. And that's the situation where Indian forces have intervened. So what we hear basically in the media is, uh, you know, uh, this is what we uh, primarily hear in the media. And we got aware of the entire situation once the Indian uh, uh, forces had actually moved into that particular area and that's where the Chinese began to react and uh, you know the entire issue flared up. Sure. Now India has been relatively quiet in this particular issue you know uh, even the, our media has been uh, generally been subdued on this particular sure. issue. Uh, so because we we primarily feel that you know we are in a little more advantageous situation at the moment because you know, we prevented Chinese from achieving their aims and we are withholding our ground at the moment. You know, what we need to ask ourselves is, what were those diplomatic moves made prior to India 
escalating it to military levels. You know, we have our military presence there. We also see that Chinese are now making some diplomatic moves, some using some harsh language. But what language did India use? What diplomatic language did India use prior to sending its troops there? Now, you know, how did that happen? How did we reach that stage of escalation where militaries got involved and diplomacy took a back seat? Now, that answer we are not able to find till now. Okay. Uh, China is holding virtually uh, press briefings every day in China, issuing fairly detailed statements as to what is happening uh, and so on, uh, giving its position. India's messaging seems to be far more silent uh, on this issue. Do you think this is a uh, calculated move on India's part or should they have been more forthcoming and made their position public better? No, as I said, you know, India has been pretty reticent, uh, reticent about this entire issue. You know, they they played their cards uh, close to the chest. Because one reason of, of obvious is that India is, you know, it's not the Indian territory which is at right. stake at the moment. Uh, nor have the Chinese actually, you know, infringed on any particular Indian territory. The Indians have actually moved in. So, Indians are actually uh, holding the cards close to the chest. So, they feel that they are in an advantageous position. Let the Chinese make the noise and let the Chinese give the concessions to us. Okay. You know, and the Chinese are saying uh, Indian troops must withdraw as a precondition to any discussions yes. or negotiations. Yeah. So they want this this territory to be vacated yes. before any negotiations to happen. Yeah. But that also uh, begs the question, uh, this territory is a disputed territory and if it is to be vacated, it is to be vacated by all parties uh, to the dispute. You know, what we have not heard is the Chinese military occupying it. Well, the reports today in the Indian press says that uh, the field commander locally in the army has said this is now beyond us the army cannot do anything more this is now a matter which has to be resolved by the political uh, leadership so we are now uh, have no further role to play so that that effectively basically means you know uh, that india if it has to withdraw from that particular place uh, which could be a solution if india was to occupy it then it the, the whole continue to occupy it militarily then the whole thing escalates to a next level. Yeah. You know, the Chinese may take some other military steps sure. and then how to prevent, how to de-escalate that entire situation would be a problem. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, uh, the militaries have to go back. If we have to find a solution, the militaries have to go back yeah. from both sides. Yes. And uh, since India is in larger number in a territory which is in a foreign territory, so you know, first probably the steps could be taken that uh, both withdraw at the same time probably. Okay. Uh, let me ask a related question. We have not seen in India so much, if maybe if this had involved Pakistan, we would have seen the media reacting uh, far more vigorously. But there is this typical mood which is so common these days of whipping up hyper-nationalist uh, sentiments on the Indian side, ratcheting up the uh, rhetoric. But this time we have also noticed, at least vis-a-vis -vis, uh, India, a similar kind of hyper-nationalist rhetoric in sections of the press and social media in China as well. You know, China of course is now, uh, you know, is projecting itself to be the victim in this particular case. And India is probably assuming itself to be the victor. So it's playing the game in a manner that, uh, uh, you know, it's playing a very subtle game. It's, it's a game of brinkmanship, if you actually see, in the whole game which is going on. India feels it's in, in, in a better position, so, you know, it will behave more maturely. It will uh, it'll, uh, not, it will uh, control the levers of escalation uh, and de-escalation, basically. It feels that it has the levers to de-escalate or to escalate the situation. So they are playing the game very, uh, you know, in a very subtle manner. On the other hand, China is feels that uh, uh, it needs to bring in its public opinion into the entire game 
and uh, you know uh, take the issue to the next level because uh, they've been hurt they, they they are showing that they've been hurt more uh, and india is actually not been hurt in that sense the problem with india is that you know we're not very clear about what is the strategic importance in this whole game you know even if suppose we are a victor in this particular uh, game uh, what is the strategic advantages that we are going to gain one question is that did indian military you know move in was it afraid that bhutan could get into some kind of an arrangement with china and give up some other uh, take some other large chunk of territory and give dokalam and settle the issue with china china has the economic levers with it in the surrounding areas if you see with nepal you know and other uh, smaller players in the region they are attracted to china because china has the money china has the economic power and it is reaching out to them uh, india in that sense cannot match the chinese uh, uh, you know kind of an economic power it cannot match uh, the amount of money which china can put into another country's economy so so there are there is a kind of an attraction which most of these uh, uh, countries are feeling uh, towards china and india is little afraid of that india is paranoid about that uh, if one looks at recent development say over the last decade uh, or so we see that china has upped the ante with india vis-a-vis -vis arunachal pradesh vis-a-vis -vis the dalai lama his visit to uh, arunachal Uh, there is a far more strident chinese position on this and the issue has been escalated with the stapled visas uh, uh, and so on why is it do you think that india and china rather than moving forward uh, towards resolution of the boundary issues seem to be actually going backwards you know if you actually see uh, uh before this crisis happened uh, both india and Ch the 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 relationship this bilateral relationship what it was at its lowest ebb it had gone down to such an extent uh, you know when india refused to join the belt and road That's initiative right. forum uh, and there was no uh, there is no probably you know i would say and uh, you know aspiration to have good relations with china i will look at it more from indian perspective because you know i read india more and i you know meet indians more on this particular issue so one gets a feeling that there is no initiative coming from india to have good relations or to improve relations with china a trade which is about 70 odd billion dollars has stood where it was you know even vietnam a smaller country trades much more with china than what we do then there are constant you know uh, calls in india which say that we must boycott chinese goods and a whole lot of then we use the lai lama card also so we don't want a good relationship with china we our our strategy is not clear as to what is it that we want from china nor are we willing to understand china what kind of a power it is so in that sense to expect the relationships to grow you know is asking for too much three, just 3 three years back xi jinping when he had come to delhi he was swinging with modi but see the 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 rate of deterioration of the relationship yeah. in 3 years we have now come to a stage where talking war now that is uh, you know that represents a failure of diplomacy probably on both parts yes and uh, why has diplomacy taken a back seat in this entire bilateral relationship and why is military beginning to play a larger role in this game is a question that we need to ask right. and is it in our interest yeah. to let it escalate up to the military level thank you commander bharatwaj uh i hope we don't have occasion to return to this topic soon that uh, the situation does deescalate and we can get back to talking about improving relations between india and china thank you thank you much. so much